By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a classical matchup, Urnum Geddon versus Troll Disco. And both of these archetype decks in old school or represented here with slight little tweaks and slight little differences. And I think that's going to make the deck tech section of, section of this video quite interesting to kind of see the take of the players on these archetypes. So the Urnum Ganon deck is actually called Pay 8 and it's being played by Baron Nick. And the Troll Disco deck is being played by Matt and it's got a lot of blue in it. So it's it's even more control than it usually is. It's, it's quite interesting. I actually played against it earlier in this tournament because this is the semi-finals of the reprint masters the tournament where you can only play with cards that are printed in fourth edition revised and or chronicles now if you'd like to know more about the uh, specifics of the rule sets for example we do play with mana burn then check the description below and there you will find more information about the rule set and also a link to the tournament website where you can find um, you know all the results but you can also find all the deck lists you can find the specific rules uh, the match videos will be on there as well I also have a specific uh, playlist of the tournament of course that you can find in the description as well so if you want to see all the other matches that are recorded in the reprint masters you can find them in the description where you'll find the playlist and then just click on the playlist and you have everything in front of you nice right um, now before I continue with the deck tech um, I always mention that you can also skip that section. I know some of you go straight to the games. No worries. You can do that by going to the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and you go straight to the action itself. Now I'm going to start with the deck deck. I'm actually going to start with the deck that we already saw in the uh, top 16 match and the quarterfinals. And now in the semifinals, the Urnum Geddon deck Pay 8 by Baron Nick. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Baron Nick, Pay 8. And uh, this is probably looking familiar to you because we've already seen this deck in the top 16 and the quarterfinal. And like I said in those deck techs, what I really like about this deck is that it's creature heavy. I like creatures and that's, you know, Baron Nick just wants to cast big creatures that have good stats for their casting costs. Like Urnum Jin, one of the best creatures in the format being a 4-5 for just 4 mana. Surrender per free 3 mana for a 3-4 flyer, that's insane value. Juggernaut, 5 power for 4 mana, that's pretty insane. And when he gets to 5 or 6 early, he can start casting Sarah Angel and Mahamoti Jin. But I mean, remember, this is a deck with an Urnum Geddon shell, right? So what does that mean? That means that he wants to ramp into his creatures, right, really quickly. So he wants to win the tempo game, playing Birds of Paradise, Soul Ring, Mana Vault, try to get those creatures out early, and then boom, play an Armageddon, blow up all the lands, and basically have bigger creatures than his opponent and win that route. But he also has a few, like, more... Um, cards that are more focused on the long game, right? So if the game stretches longer, he's got those four ivory towers, and then he can, uh, the, um, the life that he gains from the ivory towers, he can cash that in to actually draw cards with the Sylvan Library, right? So that's another strategy that he has in this deck. Now, when we're looking at the sideboard, because he's going to play a Disco Troll deck, I think those two blue elemental blasts are definitely going to be useful. And also the COP red is going to be useful. He's probably going to regret that he's not playing with more anti-red te uh, uh, tech. I also look forward to him actually playing the black ward. We saw him play a white ward earlier in the tournament. That was a first right here on Timmy Talks. We've never seen a white ward on the channel so thank you for that Baronic. and maybe now he's going to play a black ward because i know that matt is playing with terrors and terrors is going to be a great card against all these non-artifact non-black creatures that Baron Nick has so i'm really looking forward to see that black ward okay so this is the deck of the baron now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent matt and here we see the deck of Matt. So like I said in the introduction, it is a disc control deck. But as you can see, he's playing it with counter spells. He's playing a lot of counter magic. And that's quite interesting, right? You don't see that often. Usually you do see it with some blue, but then usually just for the for the power splash. And of course, we are playing here in the reprint masters. As we all know, the power nine has not been reprinted. So you cannot play it in this tournament. And still... Uh, Matt decided to add blue and actually black is really the support color here. We don't see a lot of black. We only see demonic uh, tutor and two terrors and then of course two terrors in the main, uh, sorry, in the sideboard. 
but that is it. We do not see any more black. So black is really here just to activate those Setch Trolls. Remember, Setch Troll, a 2-2 creature for 3, right? But if you control a Swamp, it becomes a 3-3, and also you can regenerate it for 1 black. So it's really strong, and he also plays with, of course, the 4 Nevenerals Discs, right? So he can blow up the whole board, and he can regenerate his Setch Trolls, and then he can continue attacking with the Trolls. It's, it's as simple as that, you know? It, uh, there's not more to it. Um, what I really like about this deck, and uh, we've seen this deck actually in the group stages. I've played against Matt. We had some really, really close match. I really enjoyed our match, Matt. If you haven't seen that, by the way, there is an info card popping up right now. You can click on there. That will take you to that match. It was just really close. It was. Uh, I'm not going to say the score if you haven't seen it yet. Anyway, it was very interesting. Um, but he's got two really cool creatures in this deck, and I just want to point those two out. That's, of course, the Sheevan Dragon, but maybe even co cooler here is Sulkanar, the Swamp King. You know, it's a 5-5. Five -five. Um, it's got, you know, blue, red, and black in the casting cost, so it's really like the general of this deck. And it's also just a good creature because it's a 5-5 five -five with Swamp Walk, which could be relevant, not in this match, but in some matches, I'm sure it has been. Um, and also, he gains one life every time somebody casts a black spell, so that's that's himself, but also when somebody else casts a black spell. So it has good stats and it's got two abilities that can be useful. I think in this particular matchup, it's not going to be that useful, but still, you know, it's a 5-5 five, five body. It's a big creature. And um, what I like about the counter spells, by the way, is that um, he has ways to protect his Nevenerals discs and to protect his trolls. So instead of just playing it and hoping that the, that the disc, for example, will survive so that he can activate it, he can actually choose to play the disc a bit later in the game um, so that he can protect it with counter magic. For example, the Spell Blast is great when you want to protect um, your creatures from Sword to Plowseers or Disenchant or Lightning Bolt. You know, Then actually Spell Blast is a better counter spell, especially when you're playing with three colors, than counter spell itself, than Power Sync. You know? So Spell Blast can be situational, can actually be the better uh, counter spell here. Um, let's take a look at the rest. We do see some direct damage here. I think when, when I'm looking at this list and we saw uh, the deck of, of Barry Nick play against kind of a troll disco deck, Disco Inferno, that was the, the deck name of that opponent, um, uh, play earlier. And um, the big deal there was that the, uh, the um, Nevenerals disc player didn't go fast enough. And I think that's going to be the same challenge here for Matt. So Matt really has to focus on countering the right threats, trying not to let Barry Nick get into his game of ramping up, playing big creatures, and then playing um, playing an Armageddon. So those are the things that Matt has to take into account when playing against Baron. And if Baron can manage, just to, like against the uh, Disco Inferno player, to just simply go too fast and not let uh, the Troll Disco player actually get any Nevenerals Disc activations, then he's pretty much home free. But I think the big difference between that match and this match is going to be the counter magic from Matt, I think. So, you know, Matt has that counter magic. If he uses it the right way, if he can stall and he can kind of drag the game a little bit longer, he can take over the control and, and he can win it, you know. But um, it's it's really a 50-50 here. Looking at the sideboard, we see two red elemental blasts. I'm quite sure those are going to come in. Uh, we also see some blue elemental blasts. They're not going to be useful for him. We do see two control magics. I think those control magics are going to be useful. What I always like when you play Nevenerals Disc and Control Magic is that they're both targets for the disenchant. So you're going to make it more difficult for your for your opponent, right? So if Baron chooses to take care of the disc, okay, fine. And you don't have a disenchant left to take care of the control magic. If you do it the other way around, also fine, right? So you may think like, hey, disc and control magic, they don't work together because the disc also explodes, uh, destroys the control magic in your creature. Y yes, but look at it from a different perspective. You want to kind of lure out those disenchants, and then you want to have enough strong enchantment artifacts left to cast after that. So in that sense, they do kind of work. Okay, so this is the list of Matt. Um, I also see a stream of life in there, Matt. Let me know in the comments below if you've played it and when it was useful. I think it's really cool to see cards like that. So I'm actually hoping maybe you're going to board it in. I don't see a reason why against this match, but yeah. Who knows? Let, let me know. Let me know in the comments below, Matt, if you've used it. Okay, this is the deck of Matt. Now let's go to the games. Game number one of the semifinals of the Reprint Masters. Who is going to advance to the finals of this tournament? 45 Wizards 
at the start. Only four remain, two of them in action right now here on your screen on Timmy Talks. Berenik starting with an ivory tower, passing turn to Matt starting with the Volcanic Island. Let's see. Like I said in the deck deck, I think it's Matt's job to kind of try to uh, keep a check on Baron at the start of the game. We do not see any Birds of Paradise, not even a green source, by the way, for Baron. So that's good news for Matt, I believe. He's playing an underground sea and passing turns. So now he's got counter spell up, right? He's got it running. And that's something that Baron needs to take into account here when casting his spells. For example, you could play a Surrender Perfeet. Are we going to see a counter spell here? Surrender Perfeet, 3 4 flying. Originally, there's a Shatter on the Ivory Tower. Interesting. I actually expected a counter spell. I think Bar so did Baron. So 3 4 originally from the Arabian Nights expansion. And there's a Terror. So that's probably why Matt didn't have to do that. Interesting that he plays a Terror main phase. Perhaps also because he sees that blue mana by Baron Nick. There is. A Juggernaut, and maybe Matt is now regretting not playing that Shatter on the Juggernaut. There is a Demonic Tutor. I wonder if he's going to tutor up uh, a Lightning Bolt and play that on the Juggernaut. And the reason he's doing this main phase is really because of that blue mana source of Baron Nick. He's worried about counter magic coming from Baron, and that makes sense, you know. Whenever you see a blue mana source, you got to think about that. And here we see a strip of the Volcanic Island, so taking care of the red mana for Matt. Interesting first game so far with a lot of answers going back and forth. We do not see the attack by the factory, so Matt's obviously a bit worried about disenchants and sorts. Again, I think that's a good decision. Because he's pretty light on lands. There we see another one. There's a counter spell, spell blast, and he's got enough mana to do that. And you kind of see Baron tap his land uh, probably without thinking because it's not a power sink uh, Baron here. It is actually a spell blast. An attack for two here and pass turn. And interestingly enough, that does have an effect on the game because if Baron wouldn't have tapped that planes, then you know Matt could have just uh, attacked. So there's a little little glitch in the game. I could say I don't think it's to, of too much of an influence. And uh, we see Baron now um, going down again in life. And there's a power sink on the soul ring. Interesting choice from Matt. Maybe a good one. Of course, we don't know what Baron has in hand. At least it makes sure that Baron cannot play out a Sarah Angel. And this is great for Matt. Refilling his hand with the Brain Geyser. I mean, that's just fantastic, right? So that's gonna gonna get him ahead in this first game, I think. I think the Brain Geyser is gonna make a change. Baron pretty much drawing into nothing passing turn here. And now Matt can kind of continue working on his board state. Maybe play out a disc or a set troll. He's attacking here. There's a disenchant. No counter spell from Matt. So he took the risk. Why? Because he's got more than enough um land. So he thinks, you know, I'd rather deal two, and if not, and you play out a disenchant. Or a sword says actually kind of good. And then Matt plays at Setchtroll, which is a 3-3 because of the Underground Seas and the Batlands on the table. Um, so yeah, I think Matt's pretty much in control here. He's going to attack. Are we going to see a Swords? No Swords from Baron. Baron taking some more damage. I believe he's going to go down to 21. He's still on 20+, plus, I believe. Although it's kind of hard to see uh, the life totals. There we see a regrowth on the Brain Geyser. And things are just getting worse here for Baron. And he's playing... Playing the Birds of Paradise, let's hope for Baron that he can keep it so that perhaps he can cast a Sarah Angel next turn. No, there's a Bolt. Bolt the Bird! Again, traditional move here. And that's what happens with Birds of Paradise when you play against a player with access to red here. Tapping six. What well, are we going to see? Sheevan Dragon. Oh, of course not. The Brain Geyser that he got back. Wow, Matt's on fire here. Really going. His deck is going on all cylinders. Attacking here, and finally we see Matt going under the 20 mark, going to drop to 18 here. And there is a Spell Blast on the Spirit Link, so whatever he's doing right now, Matt's got him blocked. He's got so many cards, he's got so much card advantage. And he's going to swing in again. And it looks like he's, he's actually lower than I thought, I believe. It's kind of hard to see the life totals here. I believe he's on 11 now. Casting a recall. Is he going to get the Brain Geyser back again? <laughs> He's going to get the Brain Geyser back. Dropping away two lands. And this kind of shows the power uh, of recall. Again, taking care of the Birds of Paradise. You know, um, 
And this is this is tough. And finally he gets to cast a Sarah, but there's a counter spell. Yeah, just a card advantage for Matt after playing Brain Geyser twice and maybe now even playing it three times. I mean, that's just too much card advantage here for Matt, you know. Uh, and I, th I think that's the story here of game one, card advantage for Matt. The third time he's casting his Brain Geyser. The third time. That's pretty insane. Oh, man. And here you can see how strong a deck can be even when you play without power. There's another attack. Dropping to five. Gonna cast six. Sheevan Dragon. No earthquake. End of the road here. End of the road. Wow. And we saw Baron really got blown away. So it's really up to Baron to have a quick start. I think the problem for Baron here was his start was too slow. And the great thing for Matt was... He had answers. He had answers to everything, and he was able to bolt the birds. That's really important here. Okay, so this was game number one. Now these players are going to sideboard, and let's hope we're going to see a Black Ward in game number two. Come on, Baron. Board that Black Ward in. That would be sweet. Game number two. Here we go. And the only good thing about this for Baron is that he's on the play, right? Oh, he's also taking a mulligan there. That is tough. Starting with the Tundra, again the Ivory Tower. Ivory Tower, of course, being a less when you're on the play and even less if you just took a mulligan. This is not going to be great for Baron here. Playing a Trop passing turn, Matt, a City of Brass. Finding no blue sources yet. Well, with the City, he can make one blue. Looks like they're talking about the uh, the focus there of the camera of Baronic. Usually when you turn off autofocus, by the way, of your webcam, that kind of helps. And there is a basic force. No play from Baron Nick. No surrender. Nothing. There we see Birds of Paradise. Are we going to see a Spell Blast or a Power Sink? None of the above. We do see a Shatter again on that Ivory Tower. Interesting here. Matt uh, really wants to keep those Ivory Towers out of the game. Although I think they haven't been, uh, you know, too significant. I would even consider boarding them out, to be honest. And there we see Matt casting a Setch Troll here. A 3-3 three, three creature. And Baron tapping four. Is he going to cast an Urnum? Tapping five. Is he going to cast a Sarah Brain Geyser? Okay, so now it's Baron's turn to Brain Geyser. That's actually quite nice after uh, the Mulligan. He's kind of getting back with cards. And here, of course, the Ivory Tower would have been useful. But Matt took care of that. And now we see uh, Baron dropping to 17 after that attack of the uh, the Sedge. There we see a Nevenerals Disc. And I mean, for some reason, like when you compare this match to the earlier match of Baron against a Troll Disco deck, it just seems like Matt's deck is going a little bit faster. And also, Baron isn't going as fast as he did. There's a Disenchant on the Nevenerals Disc and a Spirit Link and a Sylvan. Okay, so this is a great turn here from Baron. He, he probably found really good cards with that Brain Geyser. I mean, you've got Disenchant, Spirit Link, and a Sylvan. There we see again that Regrowth. And that's annoying because it's going to take care of the Spirit Link. And of course, Matt can then regenerate his Sedge. So he's really looking for another Disenchant. The good news for Baron here is that Matt's tapped out, so he doesn't have to worry about a Counterspell. If he has a Swords, he could even consider playing a Swords now on the Sedge. Just because, you know, next turn when Matt untaps, he'll have access to Counter Magic again. He's probably not going to play a creature unless, of course, he can disenchant that disc. He's passing turn, not finding a disc, probably. I'm expecting Matt to attack here. Just attack for three. Although, that's going to give Baron life, of course. Of course, he's not going to attack. I forgot about the spirit link there. Using the disc and, um, yeah, Baron just losing a lot of cards here. And I think that, that uh, ooh, there is a Spell Blast on the birds. He really needs five mana. There's another bird. Okay. And there's the Sylvan again. Ooh, Power Sink. And this must feel really bad for Baron encountering that, that, that Power Sink. He was really trying to protect that Sylvan, I think. Attacking again. And, um, and I remember this. When I played Matt, I was surprised that he played with so many counter spells. I just expected him to play with two or maybe three counter spells. But he plays with uh, uh, two spell blasts, four counter spells, and I think two or three um, uh, power sinks. I'm not quite sure, but that's almost 10 
counter uh, cards, you know, that's a lot. So counter magic is really a big deal for Matt in his strategy. And that's something you just don't expect. You expect him to play a couple of counter cards and you want to then, then just play through those counter magic cards. But when somebody's playing with that many counter spells, it's really difficult. Tapping five, there's Sulkanar, the Swamp King. Wow, love it, man, love it, Matt. Five, five for five. And it's got black and blue and red in the casting cost. There we see a Swords, unfortunately. Well, actually, it's fortunate for the match, but unfortunate for Matt's. Unable to protect it, by the way. And that means some life gain. There we see a Mana Vault. Tapping four, casting a Juggernaut. The Juggernaut is not going to do much because Matt can just simply block it on the set and kill it. So I'm a little bit confused here why he's... Ooh, he's attacking here. Why he's actually played it with the Mana Vault. I thought maybe he's going to chump it now, but he isn't. He's going to take a damage from... Oh, he's going to untap the Vault. Okay. He is, of course, pretty low on life. I believe he's on 8. But it's really hard to see. There he goes and he attacks. Oh, Death Ward. That is sweet, Baron. Bringing in a Death Ward from his sideboard. I like it. I like. I love seeing these cards, man. I think it's fantastic you brought a Death Ward in this game and in, in your deck. Death Ward is, is decent. Death Ward is decent. It's definitely playable. Attacking here for three. Playing a recall again. Wow, look at what he does. Again, Brain Geyser. Again, Regrowth. He's probably going to wait a turn here, giving a turn to Baron. Baron is pointing out, I need something useful here. Nope. Finding a Soul Ring, casting Soul Ring. Now he's probably going to chump with the Birds of Paradise. Yeah, and this has been, you know, Matt has been in control. You know, those counter spells is such a difference. Actually, he's taking some more damage first. I believe he's on two now. Regrowth, counter spell, playing it safe. Usually the good move, the boring move, yes, but it is the good move. And of course, he's in the semis. And finding a Surrender Perfreed, that's it. He's saying, you know, this cannot save me. You've got two trolls. I only got one blocker. I'm too low. That's it. Wow. I'm really, I'm kind of, I'm kind of blown away here. Because when you compare the quarterfinal match of Barry Nick playing Troll Disco, and then you compare it with this match, obviously here you can really see the variance in the different decks, right? So you're both saying you're playing Troll Disco, but they're completely different decks. And Matt really played uh, with a lot of counter magic and that made all the difference. He even boarded in an extra counter card. There we see the sideboarding, right? Boarded in, oh, I guess he boarded in two Terrors and he took out a Power Sync and an Evanerals Disc. The Power Sync kind of makes sense to take that out because you're playing against a player that wants to ramp up. So, so in that regard, it kind of makes sense. So congratulations, Matt. We will see you in the finals. And of course, also Baron Nick, congratulations. We'll make it to the top four in such a competitive field. 45 Wizards, man, and you made it to the top four. That is quite an accomplishment. So congratulations on that. And um, for people who enjoy Old School Magic, by the way, Baron Nick also has his own YouTube channel. And uh, you know what? I'll add it um, uh, to the description below. So. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Baron, for joining. And uh, congratulations again to Matt for moving on to the finals. And I would also like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you enjoyed this content and you want to help the channel out, there's actually three things you can do that are completely free. They only take a little bit of your time and a little bit of effort, a minimum amount of effort. What you can do first is you can hit that thumbs up, hit that like button. It helps a lot. Another thing you can do is leave a comment, spam that comment section. All the comments help. And you know what? I'll always try to answer your questions if you have them. And I sometimes also ask the players to have a look at the comment section and answer any comments if they feel like it or if they have time to do so. So please feel free to add comments in the comment section below. I will not bite. And then the third thing you can do is you can become a subscriber of the channel. So if you're new here, welcome to Timmy Talks. Please hit that subscribe button. It really helps. It tells YouTube that my channel is appreciated and then YouTube shows my channel to new viewers in the YouTube feed. So that's really um, vital for the channel to continue growing. Now, that being said, there's one last thing you can do, and that is sponsor the channel financially by becoming a patron via Patreon. So we just saw Baron Nick and Matt, they're also patrons. We now have about 100 patrons 
that support me here on Timmy Talks and that's just fantastic. The cool thing is we also have our own Discord where we meet up, where we chat, where we talk about magic and stupid stuff. So, you know, if you join the Patreon program, you can join the Discord channel as well. And of course, you can join all the Timmy Talks tournaments because every two months or so, I try to organize a tournament simply to give something back to the channel members and the patrons for their support. So it's not to exclude anybody, it's more to thank the people that, uh, that support the channel financially, you know, because it is a big deal and it is uh, the thing that's keeping this channel afloat. So just to thank them, I organize events like this and because I like it, of course, I play in these events myself as well. Okay, and there's one last thing. If you become a patron, yes, yes, your name will be in the end scroll of this video. How cool is that? Yes! Talking about the end scroll, let's go there and let's take a look at all the amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikker te samba gezien.